Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Viola's Physics Classroom. Today, we're going to talk about projectile motion or two-dimensional motion. Now, projectile motion, as we've talked about before, is really talking about something that's moving at an angle through, the, through space, and it has a vertical and horizontal component. And so those vertical and horizontal components, if I had something like a cannonball flying through space. And so we have five different locations for that cannonball. Now, if I wanted to, obviously it's moving in an arc, like any projectile does. If I wanted to label something like horizontal acceleration, You'll notice, I know that it's horizontal acceleration because uh, the A for acceleration, and then a sub X means horizontal. Just like in math, we have your coordinate plane, X is the horizontal plane, and Y is the vertical plane. For any projectile, at least for us, if we ignore air resistance, there is no horizontal acceleration. So as it moves through the air, it's not accelerating, not speeding up or slowing down in the horizontal direction. The other direction that we could have acceleration would be the vertical or the y direction. And so in the vertical direction, there is acceleration. It is changing speed all the time vertically. It initially is going up, but it's, as you can see, it's slowing down and then it's going to go and start gaining speed downward. Just like anything that's thrown in the air or anything on Earth, it's under the influence of gravity. And so without being supported by anything, the only force on it is gravity at all of these locations. And so our acceleration is the same at every spot vertically, and it's the acceleration of gravity. We also have velocities. Horizontal velocity, horizontally I have no acceleration, it's clearly moving in this direction. So I have a horizontal velocity that's uh, greater than zero, and it's the same the entire way. So it's always moving in that direction with the same velocity. The final piece would be the vertical velocity. And in this, we initially start with a vertical velocity going upward. You can see it's traveling upward. However, because of this downward acceleration, I'm traveling upward with less and less velocity until I peak. And then I start to gain velocity headed down. And so I continue to gain velocity going down until I hit the ground or whatever I'm falling onto. So this is your basic outline of projectile motion. From a very qualitative point of view, this is what every projectile, this is kind of the rules it falls under, this is how it travels through the air. Uh, but there is some more specific information that we're going to look at. And so that specific information is, well, what if I want to solve for really anything about that projectile? You may remember in one-dimensional motion, whether it was vertical or horizontal, we had some equations called the kinematic equations. We are going to have those again, but this time they are two-dimensional equations. So they are still kinematic equations. We're just going to have twice as many of them because you need to account for each direction. So I'm going to put all six on the board, and then I'll talk a little bit about what each one means and when it would be appropriate to use them. As you can see with this first one, X stands for my position, my final position, my initial position. This is, anytime you see a, a sub-zero, it stands for initial. So initial horizontal velocity. We have our horizontal acceleration and then our time. So there are three equations associated with horizontal motion. And 
these are the three. They all look very different. Um, they all use basically the same variables. They always they stand for the same things in each one. Um, things you want to uh, notice. This last one doesn't involve time. So time is part of the first two. If you don't have time, if you don't, if it's something that you can't solve for any other way, this is an equation that you might want to look at first to see if you can solve for whatever you're looking for without the use of time um, in the equation. So the other half of these equations are the same things, a little, but instead of with x's, we're going to use y's. So these equations should look very similar to the ones on the left. Instead of using uh, x's, which is, of course stands for horizontal motion, I've used y's because now we're talking about vertical motion. So you may be wondering if things are moving in an arc and you've got some component of horizontal and some component of vertical. Why we separated the equations? Why wouldn't I have one equation or two equations where everything's together and I can do it all at the same time? Well, the reason for that is that we have different components, vertical components and horizontal components to every motion. So if you're moving at an angle, you can think of that as having some vertical pull and some horizontal pull, whether it's up or down, left or right, uh, depends on the type of motion you have. So in the problems that we do with these equations, we might be looking at uh, a lot of information about vertical. So maybe I know how high it was, maybe I know the initial velocity vertically, or I, might, I always know that AY is negative 9.8. It's always gravity. If I have this information and I need to find something horizontally based, you can use them to help find, a, find variables to plug in other places. And really the variable that is going to be the easiest and the most common is t. So in all of these equations, we have t. t stands for time. The amount of time it takes for a ball to hit the ground in the vertical, from a vertical perspective or a horizontal perspective is the same. So if I have a lot of information regarding the vertical and I need to solve maybe how far something goes, uh, horizontally, and I don't have time, you can very often use vertical equations to solve for the time and then plug it back in over here. Same thing this way, if I know uh, how far I've gotten horizontally and I want to figure out how fast I had to have gone uh, vertically, I can maybe solve for t over here and then I can plug it into one of these equations. So t goes back and forth, that's how we transition between the equations. So obviously a lot of variables in these, um, we'll go through them very quickly. Um.